The light that you can see defeating the darkness was created by God who also created the darkness. And although we may never understand it, I declare God is still in control. God created evil. God created darkness. It is yes, a Lord. Father, me. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I can't go any further, that's when I need God the most. When I can't take it anymore, that's when I'm going to know to turn to God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Amos 3 and 6 says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil? In a city and the Lord didn't do it. I'm not here to recite any cliches in your ear. Thank you. Like you ever heard the one where they say the Lord never closes a door without opening a window. I won't tell you to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. I am here to tell you that bad things do happen. And sometimes bad things do happen to good people. I'm not here to tell you that I know what you're going through. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I feel your pain. I won't tell you this will be easy. I am going to tell you that God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. I'm never, I will never, I'll never tell you one day you'll understand this or one day it all makes sense. I will tell you about a God that can keep you in perfect peace. That's what I've been sent here to tell you today. That's why I'm here today. That's what I'm here to talk to you about today. God will keep you in perfect peace. I declare peace over you. I declare peace over you. I declare peace over you. Everybody under the sound of my voice, I declare peace over you. While you go through the storm, peace. While your pillow is wet with tears, peace. When memories got you down, I got the message of peace. From the Prince of Peace, he said he will hear you when you call him. Talk to him. Proverbs 16, 4. The Lord has made all things for himself. Yep. Even the wicked for judgment day. God even made the wicked. You think people got wicked? Nope. Do you think by the devices of this world and the acceptance of them thereof that people have grown weary of being good and then they became wicked? Not so. God created wicked. God created evil. God created good. God created bad. God created sunshine. God created rain. God created happy days. God created the judgment day. God created flowers that bloom. God created the hot sun. God created the moon. God created midnight before he even created the light. There is no full unless there's hungry. There's no right unless there's wrong. There's no holy unless there's evil. There's no good unless there's bad. That's why in the bad times, you have to praise him. During sleepless nights, you got to talk to him. When you're broke, honor him. When you're sick, Thank him. When you're up, get down on your knees. When you're down, say, Lord, help me, please. Isaiah 45, verse 7. I, who's saying I? God. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and, watch this, create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. The light that you can see defeating the darkness was created by God, who also created the darkness. And although we may never understand it, I declare God is still in control. God created evil. God created darkness. It is in this darkness. It is in these dark hours that we experience the worst, in, the worst inside pain, the worst eternal pain called grief. We, we experience grief in all 12 stages. And grief has a way of completely controlling your thoughts, consuming your time. Grief can debilitate you. Thank God for the people that's in your corner. Because you will find out 
who your real friends are, you will find out which one of your phony, fake, fickle family members really got your back. Only when you need them the most. Tell me why. Why is it that during death, people find the dumbest? This, this is the time people find the stupidest things to say. Why is now the time people choose to act a plum fool? You, you can answer your phone and somebody who actually means well can say the stupidest thing. If you're not calling to wish peace, don't call me. If you're not coming over to offer peace, stay home. Because it's in these dark hours that we feel vulnerable. It's in these dark hours we have bouts. We have fights with anger. We fight with frustration. We fight to control our minds so it doesn't take us into confusion. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, watch this, against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Paul says in Romans in 13, uh, the 13th chapter in the first verse, he says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. That's why it's not good to complain, because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but with powers. And if God is in control of all the powers, when we complain, who are we wrestling with? Be encouraged. God is in control. Be happy. God is in control. Don't worry. God is in control. I said I'm not going to recite any cliches in your ear. Like the Lord never closes a door without opening a window. I am going to tell you what the Bible says. Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. I said, I'm, I'm not here to tell you that I feel your pain. I am going to tell you what the Bible says. Revelation 21, 4 says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God Almighty. God has a system. It's already set up where there will be no more pain. No more crying, no more funerals, no more work, no more taxes. Will you be there? Oh, after a while, oh, in a little while, in a short time, it'll all be over. Take away the crying, Lord. Take away the sorrow, Lord. Take away the pain, God. Take away the anguish, the mental stress, God. Take it away, Lord. I said, I'm not here to tell you to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord or to be present with the Lord. I am going to tell you what the Bible actually says. Isaiah 41 10 says, fear thou not, for I am with you. You got to look for me. You don't have to be dead to be with God. You don't have to be absent from the body to be with God. God says, I am with you. Be not discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yeah, I will help you. Yeah, I know you're down, but I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I said, I'm not here to tell you that I know what you're going through. Guess what I am going to tell you? I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Psalms 139 verse 1. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you've known me. You know my down sitting and my uprising. You understand my thought before they get to my head. You surround my path and my lying down. And you are acquainted with all my ways. You are familiar with all the stuff that I do. Verse four, before a single word is on my tongue, you, Lord, you know it completely. Lord, you know what I'm going to say even before I pray. He knows. He's waiting on you to talk to him about it. He's waiting on you to spend some time with him. He knows. God cares. Hallelujah. I said I will not tell you this will be easy. God said in Matthew eleven thirty four, 34, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why won't you relinquish your yoke and take God's yoke? It's time to give up control and let God be in control. God wants you to trade your life for the life he has set up for you. That life has peace. 
That life, he can comfort you. That life, he can walk with you. That life, he can direct you. That's why God said in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me, you might have peace. See, in the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Listen to the Prince of Peace talking. Do you think the Prince of Peace doesn't know how to give you peace? He said that in me, you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Here in the world, here, life has pain. Here, life has heartache. Here, there will be problems. But God said, cheer up, be of good cheer. God said, I have conquered this world system. I have overcome pain. God has been betrayed. He know what that feels like. God has been abused. He know what that's like. But he overcame all of that and he has power to give you. That's why God came to earth. So he can know what it's like to be thirsty. He came to earth so he can experience grief, to experience death, then come back to tell you death. Hey death, where's your sting? Hey grave, where's your victory? That's why God can tell you after everything that you're going through, my burden is light. I've been through all of that already. I've conquered the world. God is in control. Give him a chance. His yoke is easy. Give him a chance. His burden is light. Give God one full chance. Give God one full push at taking his life in place of your life so you can experience his peace. In the last conversation with his disciples, before the Lord was murdered, before he was crucified, he said, peace I leave with you. Peace, whose peace? He said, my peace. Do you want God's peace? Peace I give unto you. Not the kind of peace that the world can give you. The world can only offer you temporary peace through substance or, or through medication. But the peace God is offering is eternal. It's everlasting. That's why the testimony of anybody that truly gave their life to God is what? Why did not I do this sooner? Every person that came out of the world and gave their life to God have said the same thing. I wish I would have done this sooner. I like God being in control of my life. Ain't got to worry about nothing. God got me. That's why he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Oh, I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke uh, depression. God said, don't be afraid. God said, don't worry. God said, give him your life. God's got a whole new life for you. He wants to take the yoke of this world and he wants you to take it and cast it on him and take his burden. That's a good deal because his burden is light. It's time to surrender and give your life to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's time for you to say yes. It's time for you to say yes to God. You know he's calling you. You know he's talking to you. You know he wants to give you a, a new way of life, a new way of thinking. He wants to be with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to hear your voice every morning. Give your life to the Lord and he'll offer you his peace. He'll be your comforter. He'll be your friend. He'll be your guide. He'll help you make decisions. Thank you, Jesus. Just say yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's time to give God your life. It's time to trade your life for the life God has for you. And this ministry is here to help you. We want you to come and, and join us every Friday at 7 p.m., every Tuesday at 7 p.m. We don't ask that you bring any tithes, no offering, none of that. We just want to bless you. We pray every day that we find a soul that we can bless, encourage, and yeah. uplift in the name of the Most High. Yeah. We thank you for tuning in on today. And again, we encourage you. And we encourage you to just come and join. You don't have to chime in or anything. Just worship us. Yeah. Just listen to the word of God. Let it bless you. Let it edify you. Let it lift you up and encourage you so you can continue on in the Lord. If you don't have a spiritual leader, consider us. Yeah. Go to covenantservants.com. Put in a, a chat if you want prayer, and we will pray for you. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we thank you for joining. Amen. I really do appreciate y'all for coming. Demetrius, we love you. We'll do anything for you. Text me, call me, watch what we do. I'll come running. I'll stop in the middle of the night. We're here for you. This is my offering to you to offer you some peace. We're offering you peace. Talk to God. Talk to God. I will see you all next Friday at 7 p.m. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.